Hello, beer drinkers. I'm Bobby Covina. And I'm Professor Bill. And this is the, the West Coast, Coast Beer Cast. So tonight we have our second annual holiday episode. Yes. With uh, seasonal winter ales. Last time we did summer, this time we're doing winter. It is a brisk 59 degrees here in the Los Angeles area, which is really not that cold. But winter ales anyway. So here we go. We'll start off with the Samuel Smith Winter Ale. Winter Welcome Ale. Winter Welcome Ale. Looks delicious. Uh, love the Samuel Smith. Looking forward to this one. From Yorkshire, England. Yorkshire, how do you say it? Hey, Yorkshire. 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 After that, we have the Blue Moon, the Winter Abbey Ale. Some people may just kind of brush off Blue Moon and say, meh. Very unlike any Blue Moon you've had. This we one is, uh, well, we'll talk about it when we yeah. it. After that, we have the Black Diamond Winter Ale from the beautiful city of... Concord, California. Yes, up north, probably named after the ski slopes. I don't know, do they have skiing in Concord? I don't know anything about Concord. I don't know, or this beer or this brewery, but we will tonight. From Bison Brewery up in... Uh, Ukiah. Ukiah, that's up north. Organic Gingerbread Ale. We've never had an organic beer. No, or gingerbread. All right. Should be good. After that, oh uh, yes, yes, the Bad Elf Winter Ale, weighing it at six percent, and this is this is way over in England in Oxfordshire. Yes, so Oxfordshire. It sounds like Bilbo Baggins was up over there. And then we're getting into the high alcohol percentage on these ones. Black Flag Imperial Stout. This one tips the scales at eleven percent. Oof. Oof. And it's a big bottle, too. So. That's up in Oregon, I think, right? Yes. Black Flag. And then finally, probably the coolest name ever. The Killer Penguin Barley Wine Ale. That's their winter for Boulder Beer Company in... Oregon? Boulder, Colorado, right? I don't know. It's Boulder Beer. All right. <laughs> That's what we're guessing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to bet on that. Okay. Uh, anyway, this one's 10%, but it is a barley wine. Yeah. So let's look at a quite brief history of winter ales. We'll kind of do a half-hearted effort, and then we'll come back and do some tastings. A thousand years ago, as monasteries became the local brewery, some monks made the first seasonal beer to celebrate Christmas. Winter beers are meant for cold, wintry nights. Winter warmer is a favorite seasonal style with a big malt presence. Color ranges from quite light to nearly black. Other common styles are old ales, strong ales, barley wines, and strong lagers. The most common characteristic of a winter beer is the fact that it is called a winter beer, and often has the word winter printed on its label. All right, so first up, the uh, winter welcome. Yes, Samuel and Smith. And what a great color. Beautiful color. Yeah. Beautiful color. A lot of fizz. Just a lively Ooh. beer, like already I can tell. Malty. Well, yeah, I got... Some of that right, right up there. Mm. Crisp. Really malty. Get it really up front. Yeah, it's um but there's enough bitterness in the hops to kind of kill the, the sweet. It's not overly sweet like a brown, you know? So yeah. Surprisingly sweet. Sam Smith kind of has that upfront sweetness to me. Often, if I think of the nut brown, it's, it almost makes you pucker from the sweetness. But then you're not getting that bitter trail, kind of? No, not at all. No, no, no. I'm getting a little, it kind of tames it. Yeah. It's really plentiful up front and then just kind of dies off at the end. Yeah. So not a fantastic finish, but definitely drinkable. It's good. Mm -hmm. Caramel. So. Yeah. Very good. Very drinkable. I like it. Absolutely. Good start. Yes. This is the first time we've had actually a sponsored episode by Practical Synergy. Yes. We have come to become uh, friends with Pat. He's a fan of the show. And um, yeah, he just went up north. You'll see there's a couple of these beers from farther up in Northern California, which is north to us. Brought back a case. A whole cooler. Whole cooler. Already on ice, and that gave us an excuse to 
So practical synergy. Do this episode. We raise some blue moon. A tasting glass to you. Blue moon. Blue good moon. transition. Winter Abbey Ale. This is a 5.6 percent. Ooh, it's sweet. It's a uh, festive on the nose. Well, they got Belgian sugar. Yeah. And just a little bit of wheat. Yeah, it tastes like a Belgian. It's Blue Moon. It certainly does, doesn't it? Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk? And I like that finish. I mean, it's... I know not as much flavor as you like in a finish, but... Pleasant. Very, yeah. It Thoroughly with pleasant. like a good taste. Mm. Wow, just a nice, subtle... Our last episode of the Asian beers, it seemed like we started off strong and then just kind of went downhill from there. Mm-hmm. And with this, it's just both of these have been really consistent. Yeah, and I'm getting a lot. I mean, it's more complex than I was anticipating. You know? Me too. It yeah. really is. And a good color, a little darker than that. Deep caramel color. Sam Smith. It's beautiful. Yeah. Here's our mascot Taylor coming this in. This would be great with like a Kobe burger. Like a nice burger with like some caramelized onions. Yeah, because it has Kobe. just enough of the Belgian yeah. to, uh, to make a grape. Now, if you don't like Belgians, this is a great one to start with. So I'm not a big fan of Belgians. This kind of just gives you a, a taste for what a Belgian could be. Yeah. It'd be hard not to like to find someone that didn't like this. It's just yeah. very... Yeah, if you like craft easy. beer, then you will enjoy this. All right. Oh. Pleasant surprise. Good move. Before we introduce our next beer, we have a, a new mascot, the Chanel mascot, Gibson. He usually isn't allowed because he's been crazy puppy. Mellowed out a little bit. Our other big addition, over in the corner, maybe we can do an insert shot. We have, drum roll please, a kegerator. So just tonight, we started off our second keg. We will not be tasting tonight, but uh, we will be celebrating with the Dogfish Head 90 Minute IPA. Wow. On tap. That's, a, that's epic to have that It's on unreal. Tap. So if you're anywhere, in this area, Lone Hill Liquors in Glendora is worth the drive. They made, what, five phone calls for me to their supplier, got it shipped and ordered and delivered in 24 hours. Amazing. Awesome. And Dogfish Head. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. All right. So. Who has a keg of Dogfish Head on their... Dude! Oh, that is crazy. On the man porch. That just kicked the man porch up a notch. At least two. It's like the gentleman's porch now. Yes. For a while. And yeah. it goes back. All right. Okay, so here we are with our next one, uh, Black Diamond Winter Ale. Yes. Clocking in at a 7%. 7. 7.2, a little bit heftier than the other ones, and dark. Wow. Yeah. Yikes. Ooh. Super festive on the nose. Yeah. Some Belgian. This one says candy sugar sweetness. That's what the label says. And Belgian malt. Get a lot. Belgian malt. Wow, it's different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know gingerbread's coming up later, but the, I kind of get a gingerbread sort of Belgian spiced in the middle. Yeah, it's sweet, but then the higher alcohol, I think, kind of, you taste the alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Bit. Yeah, it's not overly sweet. Right. So, it's good. You know what it reminds me of? If you have had the Trader Joe's pumpkin waffle mix... The finish is quite similar. It's, uh, it's good. If you haven't had that, I highly recommend the, the waffles. Wow. This is, you know, a little more flavor going on than the other two. I think yeah. a little more complex. Yeah. It's good. It reminds me of, um, of a Belgian without being a Belgian, which might be the theme of a winter ale. Like Belgian, yeah. Belgian light. Definitely heavier in the malt than mm. the other ones, I think. Mm. Yeah, much more malt, much more spice. Really good. Not bad. I don't know that I would want a whole lot. I mean, I think like a half a pint of this would be a good. Yeah, and full pint, and I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. Bison brewing, gingerbread. Gingerbread ale. ale. Look at the color. Organic gingerbread ale. But man, you can't even see through this. Dark. It is. I can see through it. This is like tar. Yeah. Barely wow. though. It's dark. It smells like gingerbread. It smells like gingerbread. Yeah. It smells more like ginger snaps. Yes, ginger snaps. Probably because I haven't had gingerbread in a long while. See what happens here. Tastes like gingerbread. Might be a bit much of ginger. 
Wow. That is bitter. It almost reminds me of, um, of just ginger by itself that you'd have with sushi. It's supposed to have ginger to kind of cleanse your palate. Um, hmm. It's a bit much. I don't taste gingerbread, I taste ginger. And that bitterness does not go away. It like mm. sits on the back of your tongue and just haunts yeah. you. The ginger doesn't help with the bitterness. No. I like it though. You do? See, yeah. I did not enjoy this at all. But that's whatever. Not, the only thing good about it is it's organic. I can appreciate that. But. Yeah, it uh, tastes like ginger. Okay, on to the lightest beer of the evening. This looks mm. like a Pilsner. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. Um, Bad Elf. Bad Elf. There's actually a Bad Elf, a criminal Bad Elf. There's like three different ones. Like the guy behind bars. That, but this is bad enough. From and Oxfordshire. From Oxfordshire. Hey, Oxfordshire. That's a bit more Irish, though. Tastes bad. Tastes bad. I mean, it tastes good, bad in a good way. It's almost, almost sour. Like it's not designed to be a sour. It's almost like it went bad. No, I think that's a t it's spicy. You getting that spicy? I don't get the spicy. It tastes. Maybe like... that's from the hummus. I shouldn't have had the spicy hummus. Um, the taste of the gingerbread ale out of my mouth. Um, it tastes like a Miller Lite that's two years expired. And you get a little bit of candy cane in there. Are you tasting that? No, no. I'm totally getting. No. If you pick this for pick of the week, I'm walking off the set. <laughs> no. It's the coolest bottle, though. You got to admit. It's a cool bottle. Let's throw that. that bottle back up on the screen. Bad L. That is a cool bottle. Yeah. I like it. And it's, it's got a lot of uh, shelf exposure at various well-known liquor selling places. I won't mention the names. But I was surprised at, oh, there's Bad Elf again. Because at first I thought it was a novelty. And then yeah, yeah. there it is again. So they have a good marketing thing, but whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't seem like a winter brew to me. It's kind of no, no, I don't like this. Ridgeway Brewing. Really unique taste. I don't even know how to describe it. It's spicy but sweet, but expired Miller Lite on the black flag. Whoa! Imperial Stout. Look at how dark. I, I'm holding dark. it up to the light and I cannot see through. Can't it. see through it. It's a swamp That's a water right here. Bright light. Mississippi mud. It's 11%. Smells like 11%. Oh yeah, this is this is gonna be tough. Yeah. I can smell the alcohol from. And I don't like being able away. to smell it. That alcohol is oh, overpowering. Whoa! Yikes! Really toasted, but very toast. Yeah. It's almost like they were they home brewing, and they just left it. And they're like, oh, oh, it's an 11% now. We've had 11% before on the show that we were and surprised at 11%. Yeah. It's like, wow. this Maybe it's good that it, you know how much you're drinking. It smells like an 11 It smells like a 15%. almost smells like a barley wine. It might be different if they made it like 9%. You know, it might the flavors might... I mean, I don't know why mm. they kicked it up to 11 because it's just not holding it. Um, mm -hmm. But this is, this is from... Beer Valley Brewing in um, Ontario, Oregon. I did not even know there was an Ontario, Oregon. I mean, we have an Ontario right near us in California, and then there's a Ontario, Canada. Yeah. And who knew? Ontario. I bet yeah. a lot of mail gets lost when they're like, it's set to the wrong because. Yeah, just the, the alcohol is I can't, can't do this. Man. It, it overpowers. Ooh. It overpowers you, everything. If you love the taste of alcohol, not much else than that's your beer, but yeah, not us. All right, on to our final winter ale, Killer the Penguin, barley wine. Hey, the barley wine. Um, barley wine ale though. Is that the same? Or is not it really? It's a barley wine. All right, from Boulder, Colorado. Hmm. It's also about eleven percent, but so much smoother. I never thought a barley wine would be smoother than a stout. Yeah. Imperial stout, but still a stout. It's nice. It's not. It's, it's not really, too aggressive. No, not the name is kind of misleading because when Killer Penguin, you're thinking like, whoa, ah, this is gonna just put hair on my chest. But I was thinking like Evil Penguin and like Happy Penguin that maybe is just like awesome. Like I'm, yeah, what's up? I'm a Killer Penguin. That's more of what this is. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> How is that again? Oh, I'm a killer penguin. <laughs> and I'm picturing okay. um, uh, picturing what's his name from what that movie? Hey, bud, <laughs> let's party. <laughs> That character would do like, hey, Killer Penguin. Could even like match up the lips. Hey, this is Killer Penguin. It's pretty good for a bottle of wine. This has got that sweetness, that upfront sweetness, though, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then the alcohol. Yeah, you taste. It tastes like ten percent. Whereas Black Flag tasted like it was twenty percent. Yeah, yeah. So at least this one, you know, it's. It's a pretty mellow barley wine. Mm -hmm. And we threw it at the end because you know it's a barley wine. And we haven't done a barley wine. Yeah. We'll have yeah. to do a whole episode of those and have yeah. one ounce sips. But, wow. It's nice oaky. Not bad. I can, sweet. You know, good after dinner beer. Yeah, yeah. Just about this much of it. Mm -hmm. It's a little sweet to have a whole pint of this. Right. Or even, an, you know, eight ounce. You know, you're having some tiramisu after a nice pasta dinner, and you're like, what do I want? Something. I want a little bit of killer penguin barley wine to finish yeah. it off. Yeah. yeah. All right, time for the rundown. Bobby K, you going to help me out on this one? Yeah. So we'll start off with the Samuel Smith, the Winter Welcome. It's delicious, it was solid. Pretty much like a Winter Welcome, yeah. Yeah, if you don't know what a Winter is, Sam Smith. After that, the Blue Moon. Um, thoroughly surprised and pleasantly surprised that this is Blue Moon because their seasonal is just good. It yeah. was solid, it was, it was right up there, top three, I think, of this episode. Yep. Um, after that, the Black Diamond Winter Ale, um, it was like, the Blue Moon, but a notch more. A little more complex, yeah. a little more flavored. Right, right. You actually could sit there and feel the flavors changing. Right. It's supposed to be a double, Belgian double, kind of what they're going, but it's more just wintry than a true Belgian. After that, we have the organic gingerbread ale. Save your money. Trust me. If, if you want to know what ginger tastes like in a beer, try a this. box of ginger snaps. And you're good to go. Yeah. Or just eat pickled ginger. Bad elf, we pass on the bad elf. Yeah, pretty pass. Much. It's a you know, it's a fun, it's a cute bottle. Bottle, but that's, no. that's all it has going for it. Black fight imperial stout. It's a too much. Cut it down to like seven percent, it'd be amazing. So I was starting to get kind of toasted, yes. malt, really tasty, but then just too overpowering with that eleven percent. Yeah, nothing I enjoyed about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, sad about that. I'm feeling like Killer Penguin. If you want like a beginner's barley wine, Killer Penguin. It's a cute enough label. It's winter e e ish. Yeah, not really what I'm thinking of with the winter beer, but uh, you know, I don't really think of barley wine, winter beer, but we threw it in there. And uh, it's time for the pick of the week. week. Top three were I think the first three. Both agree on that. We're going to have to go with the, the Black, Black Diamond. Diamond. So let's put that in the Pick of the Week box. It was uh, it was well-rounded. Great attack. Great mid-palette. Great finish. Um, not too Belgian-y, which is good, because I'm not too big on the Belgians just yet. Um, but just, it was delicious. Everything you'd hope for in a winter ale. All right, so I will be enjoying the new Dogfish Head 90-Minute IPA. A little different. We'll save the Black Diamond Winter for later. And I'll be enjoying the uh, rest of the Blue Moon Winter Abbey Ale. All right. So, I'm Bobby Covina. And I'm Professor Bill saying, Now, now that's, that's a beer. beer. And Medically Kimaka. <laughs>